In this screencast, we're going to look at constructing the Routh array from the following fourth order polynomial. So this is very similar to the other screencast, except for now instead of a third order polynomial, it's a fourth order. So the first thing we'll do is we will fill in the first two rows. So a4, a3, a2, a1, a0, and then since we ran out of coefficients, this last term here is a zero. Next, we have to apply this recursive formula for the next three rows. So I've went ahead and started to draw a big version of the matrix and filled in the first two rows. And the next three rows are as follows. First, what you have here is, in this box here, we want to put A1, which remember is equal to minus one over little a three determinant of m one. Okay, so we're minus one over this element, and the determinant of this matrix, or the first row or the first column, is these two elements as always, and the next column is because we're looking at this element, it will be these two elements here. So here in this spot, what we want to put is we want to put minus one over A3 times the determinant of this matrix. So A4 times A1 minus A2 times A3. Now what I want to do is just to simplify this and rewrite this in a different form so it looks a little bit better. That way it's a little bit more compact. Now this next element here is still going to be minus one over A3, but now it's going to be the determinant multiplied by the determinant of another matrix, M2, where this is the first column of M2, and then the second column will be this, right? Because since we're looking at this element here, the second column is going to be these guys over there. Okay, so minus one over A3 times the determinant of that matrix. So A4 times zero minus A0 times A3. <clears throat> now, when we look at what this grouping of coefficients is, you notice, of course, that this term goes away because that's A4 times zero. Then you have a minus A3 here, and then a minus one over A3 there, and so those A3s cancels out, cancel out, the minus signs cancel out, and all you're left with in the end is A0. So I'll write that there. Okay, and then, and then the fi final element, of course, is zero. Okay, in the next row, you have to do the similar thing. So in this spot right here, we're going to make B1, and B1 is equal to the minus one over A1, where this element here is what I'm calling A1, and determinant of our matrix M1, where this time, now the first column of the matrix will be this right here, and the second column of the matrix will be Oops, sorry, that's obviously not the second column. Since we're dealing with this term right here, the second column, of course, will be these guys right here. Okay, so what is that gonna look like? Well, we have now minus one over this term here. So I'm going to say, actually to make, to make more room, let me go ahead and erase this part right here. So we have minus one over this right here. So that'll be minus A3 over A2 times A3 minus A4 times A1, sorry, minus one over this term, capital A1, times the determinant of this matrix, where you have A3 times A0 now, minus A1 times this guy. So A3 times A0 minus A1 
over A3 times this grouping here, A2, A3 minus A4, A1. Now if you take a look at this for a moment, if we distribute this denominator inside the brackets, it goes underneath this numerator here, but then it cancels out with this guy right here. In addition to that, if we distribute this numerator into the brackets, this becomes a3 squared, but it cancels out with this denominator here. The minus sign then will of course flip the order of these two terms. And so in the end, if I'm going to rewrite this in a little bit more um, simplified way, it'll look like the following. So it still looks a little bit ugly, but it was more simple than it was before. Okay, and so this is our B1 term. Now the next term we want to look at is what goes right here. And so again, it's one minus one over this term, capital A1, times the determinant of our matrix M, or in this case, since we're looking at this element, the second column of matrix M will be this over here. And if you take a look at this, this determinant of this matrix will be zero, because it will be A3 times zero minus zero times capital A1. And so that determinant will be zero. And so of course, this whole term is just a zero. Here, let's take out the box and the arrow, zero. And of course, this guy is zero too. Okay, so that's the third row, sorry, the fourth row. Now, when we finally look at the last row, it will look like this. So this guy here, this element here, if I scroll down just a little bit more, this is C1, capital C1, which is equal to minus one over capital B1 times the determinant of the matrix M1. So minus one over this guy times the determinant of this matrix where the first column of the matrix is these two terms. And the second column of the matrix, because we're right here, would be these two terms. Okay, so I'm just gonna say minus one over B1 for now, because I don't wanna deal with writing this whole thing, times the determinant of this matrix. So you've got this guy times zero. So that's zero minus A naught, which is this co uh, coefficient here or this element of the matrix here, times B1, A0 times B1. <clears throat> so you can see how this simplifies again. So the minus B1 here cancels out with a minus B1 here, and all you're left with in this term is again, A0. Now when we look at this term, it's minus one over B1 again, but now it's the determinant of this matrix here where this is the first column, and the second column, of course, would be these guys over here. But these are, again, zero and zero, and so this element, of course, again, is zero. And finally, of course, this last element is zero again. Now, we could see if we could write another row, but it becomes clear very quickly that we could not, because the next row would include as a factor the determinant of this matrix right here, which is again zero. So that first element in the of the next row would also be a zero. So everything else from here on out would be zeros. In the end, what you want to do is look at the entire first column of this rowth array, and you want to say to yourself, are all of the coefficient, coefficients positive? Sorry, are, are all of the elements of the first row positive? Now we already know that all four of these co or all five of these coefficients here are positive because we wouldn't be doing the Routh array if they were not already all positive. So then the thing that you have to ask yourself is, are these two elements of this first column of the Routh array, are they all positive? And so the criterion would be, would, would this grouping be greater than zero? And then would this grouping, this whole thing be greater than zero? And so you would take a look at that, and then if they are all greater than zero, then your steady state is stable.